Hello, this is David Birch at Star Path School of Navigation in Seattle, Washington, and uh, this will be uh, this is the first of a series of videos and articles that uh, are effectively uh, exercises in uh, marine navigation and weather and routing and. Um, ocean currents, which will be tied around the voyage of uh, Jacob Adaram, who is rowing uh, from uh, Washington State, near Bay, to Cairns, Australia, nonstop. And um, so, and the main thing I'm starting here with this is to explain some resources that we've put online as a way to follow him and overlay the, overlay the conditions, uh, the conditions that he's experiencing at the moment and in particular right now we got started on this now as he's getting ready we're actually just crossing over the the uh, equatorial counter currents um, in this south central pacific so here is his website uh, jacobadaram.com and you can read all about the beautiful boat it's a custom rowboat that he's built for this trip and then here's a link uh, where's jacob uh, that link here uh, looks like this and you can um, track it let's just see if we can go all the way back and you can see where he started here this was like in July 7th up here and now we're down here some 500 miles 550 miles southeast of Hawaii and he's going to uh, Cairns right here so that's about he's got about 3,000 miles in front of him to go and uh, so this you can zoom in and this is a tracking and I and I'm going to refer you to then to this article and I'll have the links in there this article is going to talk about how all the tracking is working that they're doing automatically and then the kind of uh, extra tracking that we're doing ourselves at Starpath um, and uh, taking some things into account um, for example, the and this is explained. This his real path is not nearly so jagged as this looks like. This is because of a defect in the uh, GPS position, which is explained in that article. And so we've done a three-hour sliding average to smooth that out. And then and so then we want to overlay some data on that. Now at his website, you can go. Let's see here if I can do it. Go up here. This is predict wind. So this is a. Uh, predict wind is a source of um, uh, high high resolution wind data, and so they can. Uh, so this is being sent through a predict. He's being tracked by a predict wind app that is uh, then uh, on a phone or tablet actually, and then that's communicating with Iridium Go, uh, Iridium Go unit through an app there, and then so that then comes back to this page on uh, predict wind. And you can then put this on here. That's a European model and a map and close it. So you can see here, this is now a daily, well, this is updated every hour, actually. So this shows you his position and the wind. So it looks like he's in like northwest nominal 15, 15 knots, something like that. He's had for, for the longest time here, he's had like 20 knots out of the due east for a while. All right, so that's the data you have here. Now, when we go back to our page here, uh, this is where you'll find, this is a discussion of this various tracking <coughs> that we're doing. And, and we're making a resource that you can load into Google Earth. And, uh, and so that shows the tracks. And this will be the, what our tracks look like this. They, ours are a sliding average of the past three, three hours of positions to try to wipe out some of that inaccuracy in the... Uh, the original Iridium Go data, and then we mark every, every, these red dots are separated by 24 hours. So you get a, uh, and we'll look at the real, real track in a moment, and you'll get a better feeling. And so that shows you how far he's going. He's been lately tra trucking along at about 40, 45 miles a day. <clears throat> Uh, in other words, he's going to Australia at, at a pace that is uh, just a little bit slower than you can walk uh, backwards. So that's, uh, and, and, all, and furthermore, it's a great deal of work. He's in big waves and big seas, and he's got a big boat. He's got to keep that boat going in the right direction. So it's uh, going slow, and, uh, but it's uh, progressing right along. A remarkable progress. He's been at sea since July 7th.
alone and rowing his boat. And he went right by Hawaii and did not stop. So here then, the type of thing that we can study and get this valuable data from him being right there in the environment. Here's uh, some data which I'll explain later. These are the boundaries of the, con of the uh, equatorial counter current. This is, this is for uh, January and this is for February. So I'm going to come back to that. And we just see, and then we can overlay the ASCAT wind so we see the real satellite wind data and so forth. And there's a bunch of things you can do. So here's the way you do it. You'll go to this link here, then this will be the where we've got the file. Then I think you can just click that. I'm, I'm doing this live here, and it's going to downloads. Okay, save. So that's going into the downloads. Now, once that's in your downloads, you see over here, let's see if I have Google Earth open. Yeah, I have Google Earth open, but it's, I don't have anything loaded there yet. So let me go back there. I think once that's open, and Google, once you have that in your downloads, you can just double click that. Yes, okay. So that's worked. We've loaded all our stuff there. And on top of that, we've exposed our first kind of bug. And I have no idea what's causing it. But we got all the data in there, and it's right. And, uh, but somehow we just home right in here on, I don't know, Senegal or wherever that is. I'll have to look at that. We did a lot of work with a rowboat in Senegal at one point, <coughs> rowing from Senegal to Miami. But this is not that rowboat. And I got to convince this Google Earth that we're dealing with a different rowboat now. We got a bug there. So just manually grab this and rotate it around till you get over here. And this is then your, this is then your data. And this, this you can update update like that by rolling the mouse and here's another thing if you're going to play with Google Earth a lot is it is valuable to know you see this north is crooked here you see it's off to the side now you can click that button right there with a the mouse click that button it'll straighten it out but it turns out it's pretty fast just to hit the N key Oh, my N key. Uh, except in your case when you're uh, when the batteries are oh, connected the batteries were dead in my uh, keyboard now they apparently came around. So there you go. So you can hit the N key or hit this to keep your keep north straight up. The other thing that might help at times if you want to is to go up to the view and turn on a grid. Now that oftentimes we have a lot of complex things we're overlaying so that could just be in the way. But just to keep in mind it's there. That's in the view grid. That's not there. Okay. So now, and then what this red line is, the red line is just a rum line. And it's, interestingly enough, the rum line in the great circle is almost identical here. That's an interesting mathematical a point to bring up at some point, but not right this moment. See, normally these things will bow one way or bow the other way. The great circle route will be different from the rum line route, even though the great circle is shorter it'll appear longer on this kind of projection. However, in this case, it's, they're literally right on top of each other, which, again, only certain mathematicians would get excited about that. Uh, but this goes from Hawaii, where he just said, now let's look here, how close he came to Hawaii, and you can just zoom in on like that, and this shows you the pace. If you think through the red dots, red to red is 24 hours. So what we've done here is these are updated every hour. These positions are every hour, and they're a sliding average of the past three hours. And then we mark in red the one that's closest to 00, zero Zulu uh, each day. So that way you get a glance. Like, see, here's a real big run like that. Here's a little bit shorter run you know, and so forth. And then somewhere here, you know, when it looked like he really wasn't going to jump ship and get off, he's kept on going. So then we dropped the waypoint in there and said, go, okay, let's go on to Cairns. And so here's a pretty good rum line route like that. Now at this point, and here's the sort of thing we'll do as we go on with this analysis. Uh, I don't want to get into it right now, but this one to come back to. See, he was tracking along really good right down the rum line. Now somewhere along in here, we had a discussion. We both looked at the wind and the data, what's out and head in front of him, and it became clear that he does not want to. He, he does not want to risk getting above this rum line down here. Or he could, the winds down here could be, not promising, but they could be strong enough in this direction. He has so little control over the boat that he could end up going to, you know, Jakarta or somewhere. I don't know, but not here. And so had to put a little bit in the bank. 
to get over this side of that line. And that's been done now, and, uh, and that's pretty good progress. And now, hopefully at some point, you know, if he can work it up, uh, you know, get control of this. Remember, it's a, it's 20 knots of wind. If you've been out in the seas, and you, know, you know, in the like trade wind seas of 20 knots, steady 20 knots of wind. These are huge seas. And this is a big boat. It's 28 feet long and it's heavy. And he's rowing it by hand. So it's a big job to keep that boat going in the right direction. So uh, that's, a, that's a huge challenge. Uh, all right, so there's what we've got so far, and that's what these two lines are. Then now let's look at the things you can overlay onto it. One of the things, let's look first at the currents. Um, the currents. Now this is, uh, okay, see it's crooked there. I hit the end key and I'm right straight again. These are the latest RTOF currents. And this will, by the way, these things up here, if you just let that go, these will all update for you. You come back, you know, three or four or five hours from now, you'll have four more points on here. Or you could just delete the whole thing or close it down and open it up again, either way. But it is automatically updating it, 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 these things. So here's the currents. And I have to come back and put in a scale here. This green on this one, this green is about a knot. So this is like 1.3 knots here, this color green here. And we don't, I've got a place for it. See the thing called scale, but it doesn't work yet. So the scale will be over here somewhere and it'll show you the, you know, the speed. But this is about like one point, this is a little over one knot. So he's got current pushing him that way, presumably. Now keep in mind, this is a model. This is a model, and it, we're beginning to think that this model right now is not right. That in fact, he's been, the net current has been actually going the other direction. It's just not showing up right in this model. And uh, that, that's one of the main focuses we're setting, and I'll, well, I'll come back to that. So that's the currents. We can shut those off. What do you got next? This is just a, it takes you down, and this is, this actually could be GFS. I'm not sure. I have to track down what the, this is from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. That's there, uh, January 27th, uh, January 27th at 12Z, and right now it's a 00Z on the 18th. I mean on the 28th. So this hasn't been updated yet, but it'll be in about three hours, there'll be a new one. Uh, and so you see that agrees, that, you know, <clears throat> that says about 15 knots. He's in about 15 knots here from the northeast. Okay, so that's that one. Now, let's look here. Here's a more interesting thing. Well, let me just shut this off here. Okay, ASCAT 3. Ah, look at that. He's just, there's just been a satellite pass. So what the, so here's the sort of thing we can study now. Now is where we're getting to the point where we can start studying things. And it makes it easier when you have a particular place you care about and you got somebody there you can talk to. You can ask him, well, what wind did you see? And so forth. Well, what did we have here? We had the Bureau of Meteorology saying that he's going to have 15 knots out of the northeast. That's a computer model, right? That's a computer model. This now here is an ASCAT satellite. This is not a model. This is not a, somebody's reckoning. This satellite went by and actually measured that wind. And this wind is 15 knots out of the northeast. So that's pretty nice. That shows that the, that, that model that the BOM is using, which is probably the, US, the USGFS model, if not the new one, a uh, new FV3 GFS, but we'll see. Uh, so that's that. Then there's a, there's a, there's a, you have to play with this once you get it. This is the, this is the ascending track, descending track, and there's the ascending track. Now the ascending track, the satellite has to go up one side and down the other, and uh, it missed it. It missed the boat on this one. But these come by every 101 minutes. Every 101 minutes. Okay, now let's look here what else you've got to play with. This is, I'm going to turn on this. January and this. Okay, what these green things are here is the boundary between the northern, the, the north, this is the equatorial, equatorial countercurrent. Now let's take a look here. Where I'm using in this exercise, in the, oh, wait a minute, well, how did this thing get so big? Oh gosh, hang on a minute. I may, I may have to come back. I bumped something. 
got to keep things the right size so they stay in the video. Um, okay, so here is, I'm, I have to double check that. But anyway, these are the boundaries of the uh, of the equatorial countercurrent. And let me go to Open CPN, uh, which is now where uh, Open CPN is be probably behind there. Options. Well, let me. I'm going to come back to that. I don't. I don't. I'm getting too long here on this video. But this is the boundary, and I'll show. A, I'll just make a separate video that shows how we do that because there's a trick way to get routes like this. I made this as a route in OpenCPN, and then just dragged that route and dropped it right onto this. It's a slick trick. So there is that. There is that uh, for January. But look at the interesting thing that we learn here if we go to February. Now this is the prediction from the pilot charts, U.S. pilot charts for February. For February. So what happens is going between January and February, and this is current going this way, remember. It's current going this way to the right easterly whereas above it are the trade winds where the current's going this way so up here the current's going flowing to the west down here it's flowing to the west and in the middle here it's flowing to the east those are the counter currents i'll come back to that i have a i actually have a little article and movie on the counter currents somewhere else so uh, he's coming across here and you see what happens is in January, in, at the end of January, this current extends further that way and expands, and it actually gets stronger. It's about like a knot in here, a knot going that way. On average, that's a climatic average. Okay, let's let that go and come back to that sometime later. So what else we have here? Then I'll just let you look at this. Here's the, uh, Z, here's the analysis of the wind and waves from, um, this is U.S. data wind and waves and you can look at the zero out on up to let's say you wanted to look at the 72 hour forecast at zero zero zulu so you can overlay all that stuff and it's a nice trick with a google earth so you can play with that and now these let me get rid of this these are now the surface forecasts oh there's a bunch of those let me 20, uh, wait a minute, oh, 24 hour. That's a 24 hour forecast. And you, oh, look at that. There is a front. This looks like a front. Let's see what happens. 70, 48 hours, 72 hours. Oh, nothing happens. Nothing happens much there. Wait, okay, all of off, 24 hours. You have to practice. 24 hours on, 24 hours off. 48 hours on. So that's 48 hours, then you take that off 72 hours. Okay, so I'm going to leave that. Now here, at, at this point, what you can do, and you just click these to shut them on and off. You can either leave this, or, or you could go right here. When I close Google Earth, let's say I close it, say File, Close, Google Earth, Google Earth, Quit. Now it's going to ask me, you have unsaved places in your temporary, do you want to save it? If I say save it, right, and then I come back to Google Earth again, then what all it's done, it's moved it up from, uh, it's, it, it's now at the bottom of what's called my places. So you see here it is now down here, all this data is here. So you can do that, or you can just delete it and reload it reload it next time from that link and uh, I think I'm going to stop there that was the main thing the introduction to that Google Earth uh, KML file keyhole markup language KML file and then we'll be adding more to this to talk about the science and the weather and the navigation of this trip which is which is interesting and I think going to get more interesting